Hello, I'm James Wilson. And I'm Matthew Rowney. And we are already out of our second week on Doctor Who Series 8. Really, it's it's just so bizarre. It's crazy to think that next week we'll have been a quarter of the way through. Oh, can't wait for Robots of Sherman. I oh, cannot wait. But anyway, without jumping to conclusions, today we are going to be reviewing the second episode, Into the Dalek. And in this review we must be honest, cold, and considered without kindness or restraint. Definitely. So James, where are we going? Into darkness. Now, we told you guys on Friday in our Into the Dalek preview that our expectations of this episode were not exactly top-notch uh, compared to last week's Deep Breath. Uh, but I, I think it's safe to say that Into the Dalek did turn out to be better than our expectations were. I think it was what, I think it was just what my expectations thought. I, yeah, okay, I think it was a little bit better, yeah. The Daleks were anyway. Um, so, but I, I'll admit, first viewing I wasn't too fussed actually, it did take me another viewing, and it's the same with a few people actually, it took them a second viewing to actually really get to like it, but I'm glad I, I'm glad I viewed it again, and watched it with an open mind, and now I can see that I, I enjoyed Into the yeah, Dalek. I, I told you this earlier, that, that, that's how I think I should go into every episode, uh, I think that's how we should all go into every episode of Doctor Who, just open-minded, because uh, some episodes are going to let us down, some episodes are going to be okay, some episodes are going to be downright brilliant. You know, I, I said I, came, I went into the Doctor's Wife thinking I was going to find out who River Song was, and I came out with something even better, you know, so... Uh, I think that we should all go in with an open mind. But Into the Dalek was, I think the way to describe it was satisfactory. Yeah. It wasn't... It did its job, it I did, guess. It did its job. It, I think it, it, it brought back the Daleks. It made them better, I suppose. And we all know that the first thing that Billy Tracy from Five Who fans is going to say is... Where the hell are the paradigm Daleks? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but and and I asked myself the same question. Although me and Matthew are one of the many many people to have slammed on Victory of the Daleks and the paradigm Daleks, we've we've made our uh, our opinions very very clear. We both agree that, that it was just the color scheme. Yeah, the design's brilliant. The yeah. design was great because they were much more gruff. And um, I don't know if it was Titus Archives or, or, or Mr. Titus. I'm not sure who said that. You can tell that they're slowly just pushing the paradigms out. Yeah. Like, like they realise they made a mistake and they're just trying to think, oh, forget that they ever happened. Let's just hope the fandom forget. And, of course, some of them are not going to forget. Yeah. But anyway, on to the episode. We're going to start off with uh, yeah. the beginning, the fight yes. scene. It was impressive. It looked yeah, good. It was. It was. It looked very good. The uh, the Obviously, of course, you need a, you need a good uh, war in space type of thing, especially with a sci-fi show. Um, so yeah, I, I thought that the, the beginning really did catch your attention. You're like, uh, obviously a distressed aeroplane, uh, a distressed spaceship with, uh, uh, with someone with his brother, with her dying brother right beside her. And the Daleks, of course, do not hesitate in saying exterminate. We all knew that that was going to be the first thing <laughs> that they said on screen. Uh, but yes, uh, the, uh, gets exterminated. Um, in space there, and uh, and then we fade it. We fade out. There's a lot of fades in this series so far. There's a hell of a lot of fades. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, but basically, it then fades to, uh, of course, that first shot that we saw in the series eight trailer. That lever that Peter Capaldi just pulls down, easy as anything, just to pilot the TARDIS. It's the only thing he needs anymore to mm -hmm. pilot the TARDIS. Um, he seems to be more steady than past doctors to fly the TARDIS. But yes, then Journey, uh, Journey Blue. Her name is comes uh, comes out of consci comes out of unconsciousness and sees that she is uh, inside the TARDIS and is faced with Peter Capaldi. Now in this scene, I loved Capaldi. He was amazing. He was just so confident. He was. And I mean, witty. Uh, his wit in this scene and his sarcasm and his dark, dry humor was was showcased a hell of a lot because, of course, this is the first episode where we see his Doctor from beginning to end. You know, obviously in deep breath, his doctor was still getting to know himself and, and everyone was still, and we were still getting to know him. So in this second episode, although there was still a lot of getting to know him needed, but it wasn't done. Yeah. You know, which we'll get to. We will get to that. Yeah. Um, he then, we saw a little brief uh, confrontation with him and the Dalek, which was good. Obviously it got better. Yeah. But 
you know, the look he gave the Dalek was great, um, and I, I really like that. But again, like you said, it faded into the titles. And Tom, Tom Dix, in his review, and I know we're referencing everyone else's review. That's the positive was us being like the last people to review. Yeah. Um, but in we Tom's just... review, he did say that the fade was terrible, and I didn't like the fade. No, I know Tom, as he does, has returned to his con- uh, controversial ways. Yeah, he hates this episode. But I must agree, the fade into the titles. Yeah. It would have made much more impact, and we can we can kind of relate to this when editing trailers and stuff. We edit videos yeah. all the time. That if you want someone to instantly make you go wow, yeah, you don't use fades. No, it just happens. Boom. Yeah, and I think the fade at the titles with the Dalek talking didn't yeah. work for me. It definitely made the it definitely made it seem very movie maker. Took like you, took you out the moment. Yeah, and 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 I, and I know that no offense, movie yeah, maker. no offense, movie maker. We're we'll, using you right now. We'd have <laughs> no uh, YouTube career whatsoever if you guys if movie maker wasn't around. So yes, not slang on movie maker, but for a Doctor Who's big budget, or at least it should be a big budget, especially after the 50th, mm. uh, you'd think that it would have a much uh, a much better technology to just have it fade into smoke and then uh, and then it'd be like that. Yeah, you're right. The impact of the episode definitely did not have that sort of boom that it did before. Yeah. You know, uh, but yes, uh, Journey, uh, Journey Blue, what did you think of her character? Because, of course, she was the first character we met in this episode, so... Uh, so you know, and did you think her character was? You you said it was a bit stale. I wasn't bothered about her. No, if, if I'm honest, I was not bothered. If she was killed, I wouldn't have been bothered. If she survived, I was not bothered. No, to be honest, I, I it don't was know. one of those characters that. I mean, uh, of course, it's not the first time. I mean, obviously, we'll get to this, but at the end of the episode, she asked the doctor if she could, uh, if she could leave with him, and uh, and and why? I mean, there was. It was random. literally, it was a bit random because she wanted to, because yes, the doctor saved his life, uh, the, yes, uh, the doctor saved her life, she put a gun to his head, she hooked him up against a wall for um, for disrespecting Ross's death or something, so it was very random for him to just, uh, for her to just want to go with them. It was an incredibly random thing to do and a bit pointless because there was nothing to lead up to that conclusion. We'll there talk was, about we'll talk yeah, about the yeah, end. Well, yes, but anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, Danny Pink. Now, we got introduced to him in this episode, which was a bit of a surprise. We all thought we didn't get introduced to him in episode four. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about this as well. I think Danny's a great character. I do. Very likeable. I, I love Danny. I think uh, I think he's definitely moved away from... I think just by seeing his first appearance, very... Something different uh, from um, from the real from the other male characters that we've seen, Mickey Smith, Rory Williams, you know. So all of these very uh, uh, idiots. Yeah, yeah, all of these very bumbly sort of characters who who really uh, are, are, are sort of faced with having to compete with the Doctor, you know. And except this isn't a do- except Capaldi isn't the sort of Doctor that you should compete with. He's the sort of Doctor that everyone should hate, you know. It's like. David and Matt were those sort of doctors that you'd have to compete with because all of your girlfriends would want to be with them. But with Capaldi, you, um, like Clara said in this episode, you, you'd have to kill him before he... You, you'd want to kill him before he saves your life. So, you know, I, I, Danny, I think, definitely works with that sort of dynamic that we've got with this new doctor. But his introduction was very forced. It certainly was. I think it was so forced. I mean, it's like they were trying to say... He's a soldier. Yeah. And, and he, he's killed someone who isn't a soldier. Like that kid randomly asking the question in class. It was just yeah. so random. And him crying in front of the class. It just like, it seemed as if they were forcing his backstory down your throats. And I really wish that they just left this into yeah. episode four. We'll talk about this as well. But I think Danny's scenes, they, they weren't needed. Yeah. Into the Dalek would have not been any different without Danny it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have. And it would have probably improved the episode because the story didn't really start until ten minutes in. Yeah, I know. It's so, like it's like the episode didn't really kick start until after Danny had left the screen. Yeah. So, you know, it was it was definitely very rushed. But uh, although there were some good points to Danny, although I do agree with you that his appearance in this episode was very rushed, and I think we should wait to listen in two weeks' time. Uh, but I do uh, I actually believe that it was great to see um it was great to see Danny and Clara's relationship uh, originate uh, from this point mm. uh, because when because uh, we never got to see Rose and Mickey and how they met uh, because well how would you want to I mean chances are Mickey was the one who made the first move <laughs> and Rose just didn't probably give a crap uh, and Amy and Rory we didn't see uh, how uh, we didn't see how they fell in love until let's kill Hitler 
less said about that episode, the better. <laughs> so to actually see, so to actually see a relationship originate from day one, it actually, it actually brings a lot more depth into the into the relationship. And I think this is a relationship that I hope lasts between Clara and Danny. But that's the brilliant part, which we'll find out more in listen. Yeah, I agree with you there. I just think that it should have left it. Um, onto the Doctor and Clara's relationship. Yes, now, this which, seem, which seems to have propelled rapidly yeah uh, i mean uh, we weren't sure if this had gone straight from deep breath or not but obviously they confirmed that it, this was straight on from deep breath not yeah. not from clara's perspective it was three weeks later but from the doctor it was straight on yeah and after all of what happened in deep breath after how how much that clara how long it took clara to get used to him in deep breath it seems like they've just been together for ages yeah. they're best friends now yeah it, it gets, she gets one phone call from matt smith and she's and she's hunky dory with Capaldi again. I mean, I love you know, their chemistry. I thought some of their scenes together were hilarious. Yeah, yeah. So one of the most entertaining parts of the episode was, in fact, their banter together. That's what that's what I loved about this episode. It was one of the most watchable and uh, some of the most funniest scenes uh, in the episode, uh, where the doctor um, just says, uh, "Do I pay you? I should give you a raise." And then she goes, "You're not my boss. You're one of my hobbies." And her face there. She has a very playful relationship with Capaldi. Which is too and quick. It's it is a bit too Everything quick. Everything in this episode's too quick. Yeah, I mean, I did. Uh, I did hear that in DWM when when they, when they were previewing all uh, all the like uh, first four or five episodes. Oh, uh, yeah, and uh, and Clara and Stephen Moffat did say that they have a very playful relationship, and I was like, oh yeah, that sounds good—a very playful relationship, not romantic, but very playful. Yeah. But not a bloody two weeks into the into the bloody run of the series. You know, give it time. That's the one thing I would describe this episode as. It's rushed. The Daleks were rushed in. The relationship with Clara was rushed in. Danny Pink. Danny Danny Pink was rushed in. The entire episode was just rushed. This would have been so much better later on in the series, honestly, God. Exactly. If this would have been episode five or six, it would have been perfect. And I think it would have worked a hell of a lot better. And Mr. Tardis said that maybe they put the Daleks in episode two because they weren't that confident. Yeah. They might have been doubtful that people would still yeah. watch with Capaldi. We don't so want they to shove the Daleks in. Can, so... can, I, can I just say, we don't want to be taking too much from other people's no. reviews. Uh, you know, uh, we are definitely... Um, going to be putting uh, a lot of our opinions across but uh, but you know we don't want to don't think that we're taking too much from other people's reviews we're just uh, we're just taking little points uh, and tips that people have uh, said in their reviews and we're just outspeaking them and and just giving our just our opinions yeah. Really. yeah yeah really yeah and and you are absolutely right i mean the um the, the daleks did seem to uh, mr Tallis did say in that review that uh, the, the Daleks are not owned by the BBC. They are, in fact, owned by the Terry Nation estate, and and, the, and they are lent to the BBC. And uh, if they do not have a Dalek appearance per year, uh, at least once a year in Doctor Who, while the show is on air, then uh, they lose the rights to them. We've known this for a while. Uh, but uh, if you're going to make a Dalek story, work it at your hardest to make it good. You know, I mean, they're obviously, the, a Dalek story, it doesn't seem possible anymore. I mean... Episodes like Dalek and, and Genesis and 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 uh, Remembrance. These are all episodes that were all brilliant Dalek stories. But but for Stephen Moffat and his writing staff on Doctor Who, good God, it it just seems impossible to make a a, a brilliant Dalek story I today. Know, I don't know why it is. I don't know if it's their reputation or what. But I just think that it it should not have been episode two. And I'd love to know the reasons why. I mean, they might they might have not been confident. They might have been confident. They might have just chose to put it in episode two. I don't know. I really don't know why. That that's probably something we'll never know. Yeah. Um but now we'll talk about the Doctor and the Daleks confrontation. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. The Doctor yeah. and the Daleks. But, yeah, it was absolutely brilliant that uh, towards the ending when uh, uh when the Doctor is confronting Rusty and and, uh, and 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 it's an absolutely amazing scene because it definitely does depict his doctor and the doctor in general as a character. You know, his his will to want to turn this Dalek into a good Dalek because he obviously says that uh, one good Dalek will make every every uh, will make every difference in the universe. You know, so I, I think his need to want to make this Dalek good it definitely brings out a lot of the Doctor in him and not just his own Doctor. But there was a lot of his own Doctor in this as well, of course, and uh, his reaction to to that soldier Ross's death. My God, um, it, that was just an absolutely shocking scene to behold. The Doctor lying through his bloody teeth. Uh, he makes someone trust him. And, and he. this Doctor basically uses his trustworthy face 
to uh, to his advantage too much, do you think? I don't know, I wouldn't say he used it too much, but I just think it was very dark. But I was on about the, the first introdu- the first confrontation scene where the Doctor, he thinks that the Dalek is being normal and then he turns around and says he's uh, shocked. Right, so that's right. the one that I was on oh, about. Oh, right, yes, sorry. But there I, are many Doctor but, Dalek confrontations in this episode, but, so I was... But, yeah, I thought yeah. that the, the, the fir- this was something that we've all looked forward to and I've looked forward to it since Capaldi was cast. And I think it delivered it the did. scene where he said, you know, what living creature would want to would want to help you? Yeah. You know, and then when the Daleks says all Daleks must be destroyed, and he turns around and the music just goes. Boom. Yeah. I just oh, yeah. I just love scene. I just love how you you know how we've always been saying that the Doctor get uh, has gotten used to the Daleks and he should be used to them by now. He was used to them by because uh, he just thought uh, he didn't think that sentence through. Yeah. You know, he just he was very misled by that sentence. He was turned around. He was thinking about something else. He was thinking, right, okay, I've got to go get Clara or Just something. a normal Dalek. You know, just like, he's just a normal Dalek, and then he's like, oh, God, the Dalek's going on its usual... Dial your life, not yeah, my gonna, problem. Yeah, it's going to go on, you, it, this Dalek's going on its usual tirade of everyone must die and stuff like that. And he just goes, Daleks must be... Di-, and then he realises what the hell he's just said. Yeah. And my God, it, it was an amazing scene. And like you said, that music, that... <laughs> moment uh where you just honestly that moment was just amazing i mean the doctor was very shocked at that moment his his look there was perfect yeah but i definitely agree with what you said about the ross the ross the scene with ross getting killed yeah again that, that that's another scene like that was like the scene where the half faced man was impaled yeah it was another scene that kind of made me go wow well i, I feel like we're gonna have a lot of those it's moments. just the way that he smiled at him and went trust me like it made us go i trust you yeah. i trust you and then he just killed him yeah and then just seemed to not be bothered yeah that was just that was so crazy yeah it was the same thing crazy. later on with that girl's death who sacrificed herself yeah but we'll get on to that uh yes the most dangerous place in the universe cliche once again we talked about this on friday yes uh, the Doctor says, welcome to the most dangerous place in the universe. Well, apparently, Journey to the Centre of the TARDIS was the most da- dangerous place this in the universe. This reminded me a lot of Journey to the Centre of the TARDIS. It did. What it did, did you think of the inside of the Dalek? Were you, were you underwhelmed? Were you uh, I, was, um, I was a bit upset about the lack of nostalgia in this episode. I know that we've just had the 50th anniversary. We've had nostalgia galore uh, this past couple of months. So uh, maybe I shouldn't need nostalgia in an episode like this, but... I do feel like when you're going inside a Dalek, there should be some, a lot more classic references. Yes, the Doctor, when he's uh, when he's sort of taking uh, those uh, Dalek nerve endings or whatever they are, brain stems or whatever they are, out of those, uh, out of that piping, uh, when he's doing that and he's talking about, uh, when he's talking about when he very first met the Daleks in 1963, um, when he first started talking about that, yes, that was the only classic reference that I heard and yeah. and I was quite upset by that. I thought that there would be a lot more. Yeah, I do. I definitely know. I think it was a, it was a less nostalgia than I was hoping for. They could have put a lot more effort into it. And that's what I mean with the Daleks now. It seems as if the writers aren't even bothered no. about the Daleks and, and making them nostalgic. I mean, they've been around for 51 years nearly and it doesn't feel like that. No. It really doesn't feel like that. And then the fact that them flashbacks were all modern flashbacks as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that the BBC have to have to really pay for their own archive footage and stuff but but come on it wouldn't really hurt would it for just one bit of classic footage when the Daleks are looking back at his at his memories you would have thought that uh, that a classic memory would have been there at one point but no it was uh, a shot from Dalek and a shot from the Stolen Earth or was it uh, Journey's End I'm not so sure uh, but yes uh, th- th- that's all I could really see it was just modern fla- modern series flashbacks and for a Doctor that, uh, that just conveys such classic elements to him in that Doctor, you would have thought that there would be some classic classic shots. Yeah, I agree with that. What do you think about the Doctor fixing the Dalek? Because I thought it was good, but uh, you know when the, the Doctor even said himself, the Clara said, that's a bit anticlimactic. Yeah. And I felt like he was a bit anticlimactic. I was a bit like, is that it? Yeah. Is that generally it? And then the do- wouldn't the Doctor think... I don't know, this will turn the Dalek bad again. Yeah. I mean, I know that well, no, put them I, in I danger, think, but... I think that the, that moment had a bit more depth to it than uh, than people were real, realising. Uh, when Clara slapped him, which every Doctor must be slapped. Every Doctor must be slapped. And uh, and basically, when Clara gives him a right good old walloping, and, uh, and basically, 
uh, and basically Clara says to him that the Doctor's right, everything's right with the universe again because the Doctor's right. Mm. You know, I think that although it did seem like an anticlimactic moment with the Doctor sealing up that radiation leak with in the, the Sonic, <laughs> with the Sonic, yes, uh, I, I noticed you weren't too happy yeah. about that when he was running around in the corridors. <laughs> Honestly, Matthew's now just looking for any reason to di to b <laughs> to bang on the on the Sonic. Honestly, I don't know why he was scanning. He, that's what the Sonic's bloody for. It was yeah. for scanning where to go. Oh, God. But anyway, uh, but yes, that did seem a bit anticlimactic, but I think it had a much more deeper meaning. Like, uh, the Doctor was hellbent on uh, on trying to find out that the Daleks cannot be good. And yeah, maybe you know, he forgot about what that actually could lead to. Yeah. Which yeah. was a Dalek then going evil again. Yeah. Which then led to them having to make it good was, again. But that was a bit of a cock up to the Doctor in itself, because uh, the Doctor. The Doctor stops what makes a Dalek good, that Dalek good, and Only then... to then have to make it good again. Yeah. Yeah, it, it <laughs> seems it did seem a bit strange. I mean, although, yes, it was Clara that convinced him to make it good again. You and know, without that, let's just say, without Clara doing that, she wouldn't have had much impact on this episode. No, she wouldn't have. I mean, the companion really didn't have that much of an impact on this story. Uh, but, no, I do think that... Uh, that that the, the uh, I don't know I just I don't think that the sealing up thing that 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 did have a deeper meaning but yeah just to make it good again it just it didn't work yeah out. sorry felt a bit straightforward and narrow to be honest yeah. let's talk about the uh, obviously the, another woman sacrificed herself as well which again yeah. was dark and probably walked off and that was another dark moment but then uh, I I think what do you think about the scene where the doctor went in the dark's mind. I thought that that was incredible. I mean, honestly, uh, we of course know that uh, the Capaldi's eyebrows—it was the first thing we bloody see uh, saw of his doctor. So you know, to to see him inside his mind like that was it was it was eerie. I think it was it was really brilliant. You could tell that he was behind a bloody green screen. Oh though. yeah, because yeah, I, mean, I just think it made it compared the doctor to the Daleks quite a lot. It, it did, I it think. did uh, until like Mr. Tardis pointed out, you know the. It, like they, a lot they, of people yeah, pointed out, yeah, the, the, they blurted they, the moral out yeah, at the end. Yeah, they blurted the moral out at the end. So, yeah, the, it would have been nice to just uh, have guessed that you know the the that they were comparing him to a Dalek. But yeah, that was a very very good moment for his doctor, and and yeah, I, I think that also adds on to the to the depth of what the doctor was asking Clara earlier. Is he a good man? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think that that was definitely the moral for the doctor in this story. You know, is he a good man? You know, he's still getting used to himself. He's still working out all the kinks. He's still working out all the negatives of this new incarnation. So the fact that a Dalek, when it, when the Doctor goes inside a Dalek's mind, the first thing that the Dalek sees is hatred. And the fact that the Dalek is hatred incarnate, it is evil refined as 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 machinery. You know, the fact that the Dalek can see that in the Doctor, it's it, it's a wake up call for him. His face drops. It, it is. It did. It uh, it wasn't just, uh, you know, the. Uh, I think, I think that that was also a bit of a selfish moment for the Dalek, uh, uh, for the Doctor. I think because when the Dalek says, "I see hatred and it is good," and then he says, "No, you must see more than that, please." Mm. When he was saying that, I think he was saying that for himself. Yeah. Because when he said, when he said, "Come on, you must be see more than that, please," I think he was basically yelling at the Dalek, "You must be, you must see more of that in me, yeah. please." Please, for the love of God, see more of that in me. See some good in me. So, you know, I think the Doctor is getting quite worried about who he is. Like, he's, like he was scared. He yeah. said himself he is scared of his yeah. new body, which I think is interesting. Apart from the fighting scenes with the soldiers, which I thought looked brilliant, yeah. is there anything you want to talk about apart from the ending? Uh, well, not really. I mean, there was a much smaller um, uh, ending scene with... Um, uh, with Missy, uh, uh, when uh, yeah, oh when, Missy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, forgot about her. Yeah, Missy came back, ladies and gentlemen, for a total of like five seconds, and did something very British with a cup of tea. And <laughs> Matthew and me did uh, did admit ourselves. I am I am sort of looking forward uh, to uh, to finding out who Missy is, but you said yourself that this finale looks to be a multi-villain story. Yeah, I mean, and which we'll we'll talk about the, the ending as well now, but Rusty. Uh, there was an alternate ending where Rusty blew himself up and destroyed all the Daleks, but they scrapped that, so now we are now led to believe that Rusty could be anywhere. Yeah. So I'm just starting to think that maybe Rusty will... They're not going to let Rusty go off into the sunset for no reason. I think he'll come back in the finale or somewhere. Yeah. And I just think that all these from all these people from different episodes that have gone to heaven are all going to come back at the end, and it's yeah. going to feel very crammy like it has 
in, in past series finales with Moffat. Yeah. And I was looking forward to the side men having their own line, but it looks like it might not be. But uh, on to the ending. The end scene was very rushed. We didn't get to see how they got out of the Dalek. No. We didn't get to see what happened to the big fleet of Daleks. It was just like, oh, they're out of the Dalek now. They've solved the Dalek. Rusty's off. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. We'll tell you the moral. The Doctor is like a Dalek. Bye. That's in the story. Yeah. It was very it like... Was, it was... It was... <laughs> the, the, the one thing I can say about the story is that it was rushed. It was, it was, very, oh, was, it nice. was very, very rushed. You know, I was I, I just saw a journey out of nowhere and I was like, what? What? what weren't you inside a miniaturised inside a Dalek a minute ago? You know what? I mean, I know that they said that I know that they gave Clara this bracelet that said uh, uh, that when it said when you press the button on the side, it'll sort of change you back, grow you back yeah. into normal size again. But we didn't see any of them press that button whatsoever. We didn't know how the Doctor would have gotten out of Rusty's mind. We didn't know any of this. It's the name of the Doctor all over again. It, it's it's series seven all it over is, again. It is. It is. This episode did seem to be like it was going back to its Series 7 it roots. It started really slowly, and then they yeah. just had to fast-forward it at the end. Yeah, which, yeah. Um, let's just hope that next week with Robots of Sherwood, which I cannot wait for, is a lot better. Yeah, now we'll quickly just end with what you were getting to earlier, Ellie Ron, with, uh, with Journey randomly asking the Doctor to go with him, which seemed out of the blue in itself. It did, it did incredibly. I will admit, the Doctor f refusing to take her because she's a soldier yeah. is very interesting because Danny Pink is a soldier. Yeah. So maybe maybe things can go a bit pear-shaped yeah. if the Doctor meets Danny and realises he's a soldier. Yeah, Owen Sammons was talking about this earlier. Owen Sammons was... Uh, was saying to me, it was saying to me, he was saying uh, that uh, that that does seem a bit wrong or a bit of a continuity thing uh, with with the doctor because he takes in uh, Danny uh, later on, but we don't know how he's going to take in Danny. We don't even know if he's going to take him in. Yeah. You know, we don't know because Clara might uh, cho have to choose between the doctor and Danny, and and God knows who Clara. I will can't see so. the doctor being that approachable to take people into the time. No. This time no, around, no, I, I mean, I mean, Chris uh, was like barely uh, the ninth Doctor was was barely up for it when uh, uh, what was the name of that guy again? Adam, Adam, who, Adam yeah. yeah, that really annoying character, Adam. Who <laughs> no you, one likes Adam. Yeah, no one likes <laughs> Adam. Uh, um, um, we're not talking about you, geeks. Handbag. Mm -hmm. we, we love you, Adam. Uh, but no, um, I, I do think that um, that Danny won't be that sort of character. And like you said, he'll be a much less approachable yeah. this time around. But yes, a journey randomly asking if he can, if she can come and travelling with them. Very random. Uh, the journey and the doctor didn't seem to get along with each other whatsoever. Just was so journey random. seemed quite a bitch to Clara. She just at after points. all after all that trying to help save her uncle and her uncle try to save her. She just went, sorry, kissed him, and then went off. Exactly. <laughs> Where's Where's she she honestly, has she been taking lessons from Rose Tyler? Oh, God. Seriously. I mean, honestly, it really was. It was a repeat of Rose. The Wasn't that was, what it was like? The ending was just so rushed. It was. It was. The ending was just completely uh, rushed. So, but, yes. Concluding. Yes. Do you want to go on with your conclusion? I'll go first, then. Into the Dalek was a decent Dalek episode, which I can happily say beat Victory and Asylum, but it felt very out of place and very rushed. The performances, as usual, were brilliant by all the cast, and Ben Wheatley once again made this episode look fantastic with his great direction. The CGI looked brilliant, but I was left a bit underwhelmed at what the inside of the Dalek looked like, as it reminded me too much of Journey to the Centre of the TARDIS. The Daleks were good in this story, as they actually killed people and looked good doing it. And the Doctor also had some great standout scenes with the Daleks in this story, but my biggest issue with the story is that it fell out of place. Clara and the Doctor, although their chemistry was brilliant to watch, they seemed too comfortable together after just one episode, considering it followed straight on from Deep Breath. And the scenes introducing Danny Pink were incredibly fast, which could have been left until episode four, as without Danny Pink, this episode would have been no different. And this leads me on to the pacing of the story, which started off very slow and sped up at the end and felt like series seven. Same. So overall, Into the Dalek was a good story with an original and enjoyable plot with great direction and acting, but the pacing felt a bit messy, and a lot of the plot points and messages that this episode was trying to give felt like they were being forced down our throats. So this story would have been perfect later on in the series, or split into a two-parter, but I cannot complain, because it did beat Asylum, and it did beat Victory. I'm stuck between a six and a seven, so I'm just going to say six and a half out of ten for Into the Dalek. Well, I don't think I could have possibly agreed more. Into the Dalek was a, satisfac was a satisfactory Dalek episode, as it, um, as it was an improvement on 2010's Victory of the Daleks and 2012's Asylum of the Daleks. But it seems to me that the Daleks were rushed into the series without consideration by Stephen Moffat and Phil Ford, and just put them at episode two to get it over with and because they had to. Although the first ten minutes with Danny Pink was good, and I liked seeing his relationship with Clara, originally, 
originate. His appearance made no difference to the episode at all. I felt we were better off meeting him in episode 4 Listen, where we would have more screen time with him. The Doctor and Clara's funny banter was funny to watch, but it annoyed me at how comfortable they are with each other after just one episode. Seeing inside of a Dalek was interesting, but nowhere near as nostalgic as I would have hoped. I loved seeing the Doctor's need to change the Dalek uh, um, to good, as it showcased that he is still the Doctor underneath all the eyebrows. All in all, Capaldi as the Doctor was once again brilliant and I couldn't keep my eyes off him the whole time. If I were to describe Into the Dalek in any way, it would be rushed. Six out of ten. He used the Sonic a lot in this episode, Matthew. He used this a lot. Is this a problem? That's Sorry. what happens when you use it too much. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we hope you enjoyed this week's uh, uh, review of Into the Dalek. Yes, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and comment below any questions or anything you want to say about Into the Dalek because we have decided that every Wednesday now we're going to be doing a Q&A on the episode. Yes, uh, so on the comment section below of this video, uh, please ask, ask any questions you like on Into the Dalek and considering that our sequel fan film, uh, Hooving's Reborn, will be this Friday at 8pm feel free to put some questions about Hoovians Reborn as well. And we will answer them on Wednesday in our Q&A. Yes. See you guys on Wednesday.